Hey everyone, and welcome to this Dota 2 Beginner's Guide on Razor. Razor is one of Dota 2's primary anti-carries, which means that he's a hero that can make the other strong heroes on the other team feel completely worthless. He has the ability to carry games, to end games, and most importantly, to have a laning stage that is detrimental to the opposing team. He is played primarily as currently a position 3 offlaner. He can also be played in the mid lane, uh, and there have been times where he's been played as a safe lane hero, although his carry potential does not match that of uh, heroes like Wraith King and Faceless Void. So generally speaking, especially for new players, I do recommend you experiment with him in the off lane and potentially in the mid lane as well. This particular guide focuses on the off lane because for new players, the off lane is significantly more common than playing in the mid lane. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is that Razor is capable of carrying a game. He is a bit of a nuker. He's very durable. He's an agility hero, but he has high armor and with his talents and with the item builds, you can make him extremely tanky, which is what we're going to do. Uh, we also have the ability to push towers very effectively with his Agnum's Scepter, which is one of the builds that we'll be working towards. He has very uh, uh, good uh, strength, agility, and intelligence gain. You'll notice that his gain is very balanced across all, uh, all attributes. He's one of those heroes that kind of just incrementally gets stronger throughout the game. He doesn't have any very significant power spikes, although one could argue that in the laning stage, level 3 is a major power spike as you move to level 2 Static Link, which can be a major kill threat for uh, for carries in the safe lane that do not have uh, any form of escape. Um, he is an extremely versatile hero. He's one of the fastest heroes in the game and uh, one that honestly I have a ton of fun with. He's one of my favorite heroes in the game. Now, one thing that you need to be very aware with Razor is that he has no hard disables. He has a slow and damage in plasma field. Okay, He has a static link which will steal damage from the opposing carry and apply it to yourself. He also has a passive uh, movement speed ability, which isn't the most exciting ability, but hey, it's there. And you have an ability that does deals damage to, uh, to the lowest HP target or whoever is static linked. It also reduces the armor per instance of damage um, in his ultimate ability, which is fantastic as well. However, none of these abilities are hard disables. So that is something that you need to consider when you're playing Razor. You have no ability to stun. Um, so keep that in mind and uh, you know because as a position 3 it's his primary weakness a position 3 hero like uh, you know Beastmaster for instance has an inherent stun right a BKB piercing stun right it pierces spell immunity uh, you know you have Tidehunter's Ravage which is a very significant stun right and then finally you have Underlord who zones very effect effectively you know disrupts enemy damage and roots enemies in place so he has a lot of control where Razor lacks a lot of that crowd control. He lacks a lot of that stun and rooting capability. So um, it's one of his primary disadvantages. Although you can itemize to correct it with like a Rod of Eidos, for example, or a Yule Scepter of Divinity. Now let's talk about this previous page quickly. Okay, um, we'll talk about the skills momentarily. Now with this page, I like doing this for all my videos, giving you guys an idea of what Razor is good against, bad against, and also some, uh, you know, picks if Razor gets banned. This is my Razor page. So my pr primary pick is Razor, right? I'm looking to uh, uh, avoid picks like Anti-Mage, Slark. Now, it's funny because Slark is kind of a bit of a, an interesting scenario because he can leap to break the static link. So the way... Razor works is a static link is his kind of primary ability. Not only does it piece B, uh, B, BKBs or uh, Black King Bar or any sort of spell immunity, but when you use it, if the distance between you and the target is extended, what happens is, extended to a certain point I should say, what happens is the link breaks. And the result of that is the you do not steal any more damage from that target. So enemies that have like blinks, for instance, that can immediately break break that uh, that link is a bit of an issue uh slark has a leap or sorry pounce which allows him to pounce away which prevents you from keeping the link static on him um, but however if you link him in shadow dance you actually remain on him as throughout the link duration which is extremely valuable so it's a bit of a counter to his ultimate but it is an issue with his pounce so a, a pretty interesting scenario there and waveform on uh on um Morphling allows him to get away from you without actually maintaining your static link, right? Uh, Queen of Pain has a blink as well. 
So he's not good against very mobile heroes that are very good at breaking his static link. However, he's very, very good at heroes that do not have that type of mobility. For instance, Lifestealer has Rage, which makes him spell immune, but it does not dispel static link, and it does not uh, prevent him from getting uh, static link cast upon him, right? Because it's uh, spell immune uh, piercing. Uh, Troll Warlord is the same way. He builds a BKB, but as we're going to see in the replay examples I show you later, Troll can't do anything against Razor. He can't run away. He can only really TP away, right? He can't fight Razor because the amount of damage that he loses was going to make Razor just kill him every time, okay? Because he has no inherent escape. Sven's the same. Juggernaut's the same. Ursa's the same. These are heroes that can't get away from Razor. So when Razor static links them, not only is he stealing their damage away from them, so he, they can't even return it on Razor, but he's using it against them right so it's this is like the bread and butter of razor static linking an opponent hitting them until they can't get hit anymore and if they hit you back they're, they're just tickling you right they're barely even hitting you okay now what i would recommend you do is if you are running razor in the off lane this is an off lane setup here and i do play beastmaster mid on occasion uh he's currently meta mid as well uh but uh if razor gets banned i look towards is it a tide hunter is it a good tide hunter game is it a good underlord game is it a good beastmaster game and then I make that decision. Once again, you can make this screen yourself. You go down here and you basically just create a new layout and you can make your own layout. It's actually pretty easy to customize. I've actually done a video on it in the past. And uh, But yeah, you can just copy this one if you wish. These are all great heroes. Let's move on to the in-game guide for the skills. All right, let's talk about Razor's skills. Now, what I should do before we start, though, is let you know that you can find this guide in-game under Razor Beginner's Guide by Octavarium, and it'll provide the skill build, all the items, and descriptions as necessary. I'll also link the build uh, to the Steam Workshop in the description and the comments below in the event that you can't find it in the game client, which happens from time to time, but you can find it in the description and in the comments section, okay? Direct links to them. Um, with regards to skills, I'm going to talk about the first uh, level 10 up to level 10 skill build you're going to start with static link first you're buying static link and then you're actually going with storm surge the reason why we take storm surge first is because the middle tower is under attack we're taking storm surge first because it is a 12 percent flat movement speed bonus at level one whereas you only get four additional percentage points at level two the first value point is so significant look at my speed it goes from 290 to 324 that is almost the equivalent Almost, but not quite, the equivalent of a boots of speed. So you're looking at almost 500 gold in value in just one value point at level 1. At level 3, you go back to your static link. When you have static link and you have storm surge, you are a legitimate kill threat. At level 3, you want to kill the opposing carry. It is very hard for them to escape you. It's very hard for them to deal with the amount of damage that you're stealing. Um, and for the amount of uh, damage that you're going to be dealing back. Okay, at level 4... You're taking Plasma Field. The reason why you're doing this is because you're utilizing it for its uh, slow effect, less for its damage. Its damage is helpful, sure, but it allows you to static link someone. If they start to get away, you Plasma Field and you keep them within range. Then you go to Static Link. You take your ultimate at level 6. You At level 7, you are taking your Static Link again. You're maxing it out. At level 8, you are taking your Plasma Field. At level 9, you're taking your Plasma Field. And at level 10, you are going to be taking... Your talent point. If you are a mid lane raiser, you can go with the nine agility, but I definitely recommend as an off laner that you take the health. Okay, so we're gonna take that health, uh, and again, you we're gonna have the full build available in the guide as well, and I'll discuss that shortly. Okay, but that is your first ten levels with regards to your skill build. And what you end up having at level 10 is you have three points in the plasma field, the value point is the storm surge, you have static link, and you have your eye of the storm. Now there's a couple things you need to know. Plasma field. Plasma field is actually a skill that uh, it kind of, uh, kind of comes out from within your vicinity around Razor. The also important thing to know is that it moves with Razor. So what you can do is you can kind of time it. So if you're here, right, and you hit the, uh, the axe, you're only hitting them for partial damage because the further it goes out, the more damage it does and the more slow it applies. So what you can actually do is you can actually move and position yourself so that you're hitting him on the edge of the ring. So for instance, let's say he's, he's running towards you. You can actually position yourself so that you kind of make the most of the effect, right? If he's running away and you know you're going to kill him, you can actually position yourself so that you're hitting him right with the edge of the skill. Uh-oh, I attracted some baddies here. 
The other thing to know is that you can use it to catch a fleeing enemy. So let's say the axe is running away, right? Let's say you put him here. He's running away. You use it to catch him and static link him, and now he's slowed. You see how that effect happened? He got slowed for that moment. He couldn't do anything. Okay, great. That's exactly what we want. Let's refre uh, refresh here. Uh, you can use it to catch a fleeing enemy, static link them, and prevent them from getting away. Okay? Um, it's a great it's a great ability. It hits multiple enemies. So if you're in a team fight and there's a bunch of people around you, you can use Plasma Field to hit multiple enemies. Uh, it is uh, a very effective skill. Unfortunately, it does not do effect, uh, any effect to, uh, to towers. And it's not great at clearing camps. Although, if you are clearing, uh, you know, um, creep camps, if you have a creep camp here and a creep camp there, you can actually hit both creep camps at once, like in your jungle, uh, by casting Plasma Field. And again, we max out Plasma Field at level 11. Now, let me explain how Static Link works. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Razor a BKB. Uh, the BKB is... Why can't I find it? Oh, yeah, it's not in... Uh, it's an artifact, isn't it? Where is it? Why can't I find BKB? Here it is. Here's BKB. Anyway, so you have a BKB on the axe. And uh, what we do here is we essentially make it so that um, Static Link will pierce BKB. So if someone is magic immune, usually, like, watch, for instance, so axe uses his BKB, we do Static Field. Takes no damage. He has no effect. Absolutely no effect on him, right? Why? Because he's magic immune. However, Static Link will pierce spell immunity. And you'll have a lot of players that'll pierce, that'll uh, use their BKB, and guess what? It doesn't matter. I'm still Static Linking you. I'm basically ignoring the, uh, the BKB in its entirety. Now, your other skills cannot ignore it. But you've ultimately ignored it for the purposes of Static Link. And Static Link is one of the best skills in the game uh, with regards to uh, disabling the enemy carry from dealing damage. So let's say that Axe is not particularly a damage-centric hero. But there's a few things you need to know. So Axe okay, is doing 176 damage plus 24 because he has his BKB. So if he's hitting you, he's hitting me for about 164 damage. Now if I Static Link him... You're going to notice that his damage is, is dwindling. Look at the damage number on me. 91, 77, 64, 53, 36, 23. Now he's only hitting me for 17. And I'm hitting him for far more. I've stolen his damage, and now I'm doing it back to him. That is what makes Static Link so interesting, okay? Static Link is one of those abilities that truly can turn the tide of battle. i got to lay a ward here so we can see. Um, because what it does is it takes the enemy carries uh, damage and it gives it to you and takes it away from them. And so you might have situations where, you know, an enemy carry like a troll warlord is going to run up to you thinking he can kill you. And he can't because you've stolen all his damage. It's a truly remarkable skill. Also, it'll automatically attack while you move whoever it is you're linking. So if he tries to run away from you, you can actually chase him fluidly and continue to attack him. Okay? It's a pretty interesting effect. A really neat uh, skill and one of the best anti-carry skills in the game. Pierce's BKB. And the way you want to use Static Link is like, for instance, let's say you have an axe and you have another enemy, right? Let's say you have a uh, PA. PA is a little trickier because she can kind of... Uh, she can kind of evade you a little bit. But anyways, let's say you have a PA. Everyone's at the max max uh, damage here. You're in a team fight. Who do you target? Right? Do you target the Axe? Do you target the Enchantress? Right? Or you target the PA? You target PA. The reason why is because PA, with her Coupe de Grasse, is going to do the most damage. She's going to build to do the most damage. Axe is an initiator. Enchantress is a support. Phantom Assassin can right-click anybody in your team to death. So what you do is you make sure that you drain all of her damage away so that in the course of a fight, she's doing greatly less damage over the course of a fight. And her crits are worth nothing, right? She doesn't have any items. She's only hitting me for one damage. But the point is, is that you want to target the enemy carry at the start of fights because it prevents them from doing any true damage to you. Okay, that is what's important. You want to target the carry in team fights so that their damage is completely diminished. Okay, because it has a lingering effect as well. Even after the link is done, the duration still uh, kind of, um, you know, goes forward for a little while, right? So it's going to impact the enemy carry's ability to do additional damage. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning, if you use Eye of the Storm, what it's going to do... Eye of the Storm is a great, great ability. It does a lot of damage. It also pierces BKB, which is fantastic, right? Because it works very well with Static Link. And the key thing here is that 
not only is it doing damage, but it has a strike interval. So every time it strikes somebody, right, what it's going to do is it's actually going to reduce their armor as well. It prioritizes targets with low health, so you should not use it within the range of creeps because the creeps have low health, lower health than heroes, so you're going to be wasting those strikes on creeps. You want to use it when there's no creeps present, and watch this. So we have an enchantress with 1800 health, axe with uh, 31 and 2100 on PA. This will automatically hit the enchantress because she has the lowest health total. However, if I static link the PA, it'll now hit the PA. It tends to focus on the target being static linked. You're also going to notice PA's armor going down, right? Watch as every single attack I do is going up in damage, okay? 214, well, 200, 239, 237, 278. What's happening is PA's armor is dwindling, and so is her armor as well. The amount of damage being done, okay, 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 calm down, everybody. But the amount of damage being done is being amplified. So not only are you just doing static link damage, but you're also doing damage via the static storm. So their their uh, physical resistance and their armor is going down as well. So each indi individual attack is not just doing more additional damage based on the idea that you're hitting them and stealing their damage. You're actually reducing their armor as well to 28 physical resistance where they would have had significantly more. So you're doing significantly more damage each hit because of the effect of the lightning storm or the eye of the storm, I should say. And the static link allows you to focus any individual target. Okay. With regards to itemization for an offlane razor, I do suggest that you do two sets of tangos, a healing self, and two circlets. You can also do the same for uh, for a mid laner as well, except with the circlets, instead of building into bracers, you can build them into wraith bands, okay? Now what we do in the early game, the early game item progression, is we complete our two bracers. The reason for this is because Razor is going to greatly benefit from the amount of strength gain, he's going to benefit from the damage, but most importantly from the amount of HP he's getting from the strength. As a Razor player in the off lane, he really benefits from being tanky. Even as a mid laner, having like, being a surviving factor in a team fight is a major benefit to Razor because of the way his Eye of the Storm works and the way we're building his Aghanim Scepter. Okay, so it's definitely beneficial that you build strength for Razor, despite being an agility hero. And then what you're doing is you're actually going to build phase boots next. You're going to prioritize the boots first, and then you're going to get the chainmail, and then you're going to finish into phase boots. The reason why we use phase boots is because um, when you're actually moving through static link, okay, where's my heroes again? Let's talk about static link again. So if the hero's trying to get away with you and st with static link on you, what it allows you to do, it allows you to close the gap by using the, the burst of speed, okay? It allows you to keep that the gap closed. It also allows you to move through units so they can't actually block you, okay? So as a razor, right, if you're getting blocked by creeps and stuff, it's hard to keep up with your units. But when you use phase boots, you can actually move through units through your phasing uh, phasing abilities. So phase boots are important because not only does it give you the speed boost, it also gives you additional armor and damage, which Razor likes. Razor loves armor. But also it allows you to phase through units, which allows you to keep the static link active. Okay, that is the reason why you build phase boots. Um, now, during physical and magical lineups, you'll have a different skill build, okay? They ultimately end up at the Agnum Scepter, but ultimately, it's very important that you identify whether or not you're taking a lot of magic-based damage or physical-based damage, okay? So if you're taking a lot of magical-based damage, you're going to want to take a value raindrop. The raindrop is criminally underused in Dota 2, especially at lower MMRs. It is the difference between life and death against many lineups. Use it, okay? That damage block is huge. Let's assume that you've used these rain... Uh, used the... Uh, the tango's there. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to build a Pipe of Insight. It not only does it give you additional magic resistance, which is going to greatly benefit you by helping you survive uh, later in fights because uh, the magic resistance helps keep you alive. But it also benefits your team by providing 400 damage spell block, which is extremely valuable. And it's one thing you want to do as a position 3 Razor. You want to build items that benefit your team. Uh, from there, I do recommend you build a, a BKB. The Black King bar is going to protect you from hard disables, which Razor is kind of susceptible to. If you hard disable him, um, you know, it's going to be very hard for him to have, uh, you know, much of an impact on a fight. Uh, from there, I do recommend you go with the Aghanim's Scepter. The reason why you're going Ag Scepter here is because... It allows you to hit an additional target. So when your Eye of the Storm is going off, you're not just hitting one target, you're going to hit two targets, which benefits everyone because you're doing additional damage, you're going to be doing additional armor uh, reduction. It is just, it makes Razor a very, very 
um, you know, destructive force in a team fight, especially when you couple it with later, when we go to our max level here, when you ultimately, uh, you will, I didn't mean to go all the way to max, but ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to take, it won't let me hover it, but you're going to be taking the Eye the, Storm, Eye the Storm Strike Interval Talent, and you'll be taking the Eye of the Storm Additional Target Talent. And the result of that is that you will be able to hit more, like three targets at once at faster strike intervals. You become an absolute menace in a team fight. So the Agnum Scepter is very valuable, and not only that, but it allows you to hit buildings, which later in the game, when you have an opportunity to end the game, Razor becomes a legitimate pushing factor to help you end. Um, you finally finish it off with the Aghanim Shard if you have the money. Uh, the reason for this is because it is a nice passive that you don't have to worry about so much. If you are targeted by a spell, it, pervert, it, it creates a uh, surge of energy that damages and slows enemies around you. And it also applies on an 18% chance when you are attacked. It's simply beneficial. If you are against lineups that are focusing on... Um, Physical damage. You are going to build a Vanguard first. It is simply a strong unit in the current patch. Uh, item, sorry, I should say. And then from the Vanguard, you are building the Crimson Guard. Because the Crimson Guard will provide you not only with the passive damage protection, but it's going to also provide your uh, teammates with an opportunity to share some of that damage block. Moreover, what you're going to build is you're going to build the Black King Bar. Okay? You're going to build a Black King bar, and it's going to prevent you from being hard disabled, as we discussed prior. Wow, there's a lot of talking going around as our middle tower gets destroyed here. Um, anyways, so you're going to build the Black King bar, and then once again, you're going to finish with the Ag Scepter for the same reasons we discussed prior, and then go to the Aghanim Shard. Okay, let's talk about his optional items. With regards to Razor's optional items, several of them have a very similar function. Let's talk about the Rod of Eidos and the Yule Scepter of Divinity. The Rod of Eidos is simple. When you have Static Link, people try and get away from you, and the Rod will link them in place and prevent them from getting away while you Static Link and absolutely destroy them, okay? Now, from there, the other thing that the Rod of Eidos does is one of the ways that you get away from Razor is by teleporting, and the Rod of Eidos will prevent a teleport. A lot of players, once they're static linked, Plasma Field and Eye of the Storm, they'll just teleport away, which is a very smart move because Razor does not have a hard disable. This provides a, uh, the ability to prevent the TP from actually activating. To the same effect, Yule Scepter does the same thing. It prevents someone from TPing away. It also provides Razor with movement speed, which he generally likes. The other thing about uh, the, the Yule Scepter Divinity is that the static link is not dispellable. So if you static link someone and they go to TP, and you do this, they're not getting attacked, but you're still stealing their damage. And when they land, you're just hitting them for it all back again. Okay? So the Yule uh, Scepter Divinity works well with Razor and the Static Link because they cannot get away. Okay? That's the primary reason why you use those two items. Uh, the other items that we'll discuss here, we'll sell off our bracers. I don't need this either. The other items I'll discuss here briefly, Sage and Yasha. Heaven's Halber. And we'll discuss the other armor items in a moment. But Heaven's Halberd's great if you're against someone like PA. PA is great because they can just right-click you and kill you, right? And what you can do is you can actually just disarm them. And now they can't do anything at all, right? The interesting thing about that as well is that if you choose to, you could link. Okay, you can link while they're hitting you, disarm them. You're still stealing their damage. And then when they're, uh, when they're not disarmed anymore, all their damage is gone. So you can use it to good effect to disrupt an enemy carry by basically taking away the moments where they could have done damage anyway, right? Because the static link kind of ramps up over time. For that time period where they're disarmed, you're able to hit them freely, right? And steal all their damage away. Uh, you can also do something like this. Uh, let's say they have multiple carries. Let's say Axe is super farmed. You could actually do this. You could static link them and disarm him. And now you've effectively disabled two carries on their team, right? It would be better if Axe was like a, like a mid, like a you know, like a Wind Ranger or someone that you know is coming to make a good kill on you and you just disarm them while you static link their primary carry. So, an interesting idea, an inter interesting concept. Sage and Yasha is interesting as well because it is a very good item, this current patch. Um, it has uh, a lot of strength and agility, which is exactly what Razor wants. He wants the strength for the HP. He wants the agility for his attack speed and his armor. He also gets additional movement speed, and he gets attack speed and, most importantly, 25% status resistance. So he can resist status effects like, you know, like stuns and things along those lines. It makes him able to just continuously moving and keeping up with his opponent, okay? Sage and Yasha, while expensive, is still an excellent item in the game. One thing I should mention is you're never building Heaven's Halbert and Sage and Yasha together it's either one or the other My current 
as you move into the really late game and you've finished your primary kind of uh, build setups here, you can look towards getting these armor-based items. Heart of Tarask basically makes you unkillable. Okay, again, Razor is a hero that benefits from simply surviving the fights, using Eye of the Storm, being in the middle of the fights, and just wreaking havoc. And the more health he has, the more capable he is of doing that. Okay, Heart of Tarask accomplishes that goal. He becomes very difficult, if not near impossible, to kill with his strength, his armor, and his health, okay? Soul Curious is great too. Not only does it give you armor, it gives your teammates uh, and structures armor as well. And it also basically um, reduces the opposing armor of enemy units as well. So it goes uh, hand in hand with his uh, Eye of the Storm. You're doing uh, armor reduction as you damage opposing, opposing units nearby. And also your um, Assault Curious is going to do the same. Razor also benefits from Shiva's Guard. It prevents uh, healing and regeneration. Not only that, but because he's always in the middle of a fight, you can use its active to really disrupt enemies because with your static uh, static link and your Eye of the Storm, you're always in the middle of a fight, right? So Shiva's Guard not only gives you the, the additional armor, but it's going to give you an active that uh, does additional damage and slows their movement speed, which prevents them from getting away from static link and increases the amount of damage they take from the storm. You can also go Lotus Orb. Lotus Orb is great. Uh, we need an enemy to really show this off here. Where's uh, where's Alina? Give me Alina here. We'll level Lena to max. Oh, I didn't level her. There's Lena. So Lena's going to have her famous Laguna Blade. And let's say you have a single target disable on someone like Alina uh, or, you know, a, a Hex or someone like a Shadow Shaman or Lion. What you can do is you can uh, cast this on yourself or on others. And what it does is Lena cast. It reflects it back at her. Okay. So you still take the damage of the, the, the cast, but Lotus Orb will actually redirect the unit, the, the effect, back to the uh, the opposing target. Alright, in this gameplay example here, I'm showing you a Razor that I happen to be playing mid in this circumstance here. But I want to illustrate to you how you can use Static Link and Eye in the Storm, and how much damage you can do when you start stealing damage away. It is truly remarkable. Now I'm doing actually a pretty high level play here, if I can say so myself. Uh, what I'm doing here is, uh, I actually have an Illusion mid, so it's harder for them to anticipate the rotation here. It's showing that I've used my skill, but I have not yet. What I do is I, I see this Lich, he comes towards me, I static link him, and I cast my Eye of the Storm. I also notice that there's a gap here, so I block the Lich's escape route through the trees, right? I try and slow him down so I can get the, the kill on him. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to get the, you don't want to static link the support because you're not taking any damage off the primary carry, which is the Troll Warlord in this case. But what I know here is that I've stolen, I have now, I'm doing double damage. Watch what's happening to him. I'm running away. His armor is ticking down. My snap fire is coming. Watch what happens to this troll. I use my ability. I hit him right on the edge. I come back in and look at it. Look at his health just disappear. Why? Because I'm hitting for basically double my actual damage because of the amount of, amount of Static Link and I the Storm damage I've, I've done. And also because of the amount of armor reduction I caused to that troll. Watch it again. Okay, so watch this troll. It's, it's, this, uh, it's unfortunate. So the troll here, he has 38% resistance right now. But watch as soon as he starts taking hits from the Static Link there. Okay, he's just dead. He gets deleted. He's gone. And that is the benefit of Eye of the Storm's armor reduction and the static link uh, damage uh, kind of uh, being stolen away. I didn't steal Troll's damage in this circumstance, but what I did do was I applied the damage I stole to kill Troll. He did not expect me to be able to hit two times as hard. Good effort indeed. Let's move on to the next example of how to play Razor. All right, in this next example, Troll here is upset. He's angry that I just killed him, okay? This is shortly after the incident I just showed you. He's coming mid to get the gank. He sets up the astral, right, to get, get the gank on me. Troll Ward's like, I'm getting this razor. I hate this razor. Look at what he does. He sees I'm at no, almost no health, okay? But watch this. This is the beauty of Static Link. I'm at 269 health. Watch his damage just disappear. Look at this. He ulted me. Now, he's literally doing negative damage. He's not hitting me. I stood up to him and just man fought him. He's literally doing no damage to me. He can't hurt me. He literally cannot hurt me. And the result of that is I laugh, he buys back, and his game's over. His game's over. He just bought back within nine minutes after I just killed him. Good effort indeed. And it all comes down to, honestly, is the static link. I look like an extremely vulnerable target, right? He comes up to me. He thinks he can kill me. Watch his damage just disintegrate. I'm at, I have almost no health, right? 
But I'm static linking him. And his health's gone. Look how fast it's gone. He's not hitting me for any damage. And yeah, he's under tower, but he literally cannot do any damage to me. He's doing negative damage. He's not healing me, but he's doing hitting me for zero damage. That is the power of Static Link. And that is why Razor is the ultimate anti-carry. Because he is able to do things like that. Where he can make the enemy carry just feel completely useless. Alright, I'm not trying to pick on this troll here. But this serves as a good learning opportunity. Razor is not that popular. People don't pick him that often. This troll warlord has not played against a Razor very often. And did not know how to respond. When I walked up to him, right? Snuck up on him. He should have moved. But... What I did was, static linked him, stealing all his damage away once again, okay? Use my plasma field. He should just run away. He can't run away. You know what he should do? He should TP, but he can't TP. So now we're in a situation, right? He's had his armor stolen from him, okay? I have all the damage. I have 174 bonus damage. Look, again, he can't hurt me. I stole all his damage away from him. It's just a matter of time before I kill him. Even the tiny knows, like, oh, this razor's got him. All right, and for this final analysis here, we're going to take a look at a Razor. Once again, this was a mid-game, but uh, basically I have double Wraith Band. I got a Heart of Trask because I set a very good situational item where I want a lot of HP, which I did in this game. I have my BKB, as I would have suggested to you, and the Aghanim's Scepter. Uh, Lich is my primary target here because I have the reduced uh, cooldown at only 25 seconds at level 4. I figure, you know what, I'll just kill this Lich. I don't want him to ult, he ultimately gets his ult off anyway. And I ended up going with Boots of Travel this game because I wanted the additional move speed. I do recommend as an off laner that you do use your uh, phase boots. As a mid laner, I went Boots of Travel so that uh, I could uh, move around the map more effectively. But anyways, once I see that he's in base, also you'll notice that while he's invisible, I'm still stealing his damage. My main goal here is to use my uh, my Eye of the Storm with my Aghanim Shard and my Aghanim Scepter to take the objectives. Razor is very good at doing this. Late in the game, you're able to use your uh, Aghanim's Scepter and your ultimate ability to do building damage and take down these buildings to the best of your ability. He ultimately becomes a game-ending pusher, and that's why I recommend you do your Aghanim's Scepter as one of your last items in the primary build. Anyways, guys, here's an example of how to play Razor. I hope that uh, you really uh, benefited from this beginner's guide. Once again, I will link my uh, in-client guide in the... Uh, in the uh, comment section and in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. We will see you in the next Dota 2 Hero Guide.